Bidding wars are back when it comes to Toronto real estate. In this video, we will break down one of the articles that came out as soon as the stats came out and also go through those stats one by one to get a really good dive into what's been happening in the Toronto real estate market. But more importantly, we'll talk about what we've been seeing on the ground level while working with buyers and sellers in the market today. I'm Mike Loses. I'm a realtor here in Toronto. If you ever wanted to book in a call with me, click on that first link in the description down below. We can discuss what exactly is going on in the area that you're looking to make a move in. First up, let's jump over to blog TO. Bidding wars have returned as the GTA's housing market, GTA Greater Toronto Area, of course, housing market heats back up. Looking through this article, it says overbidding has officially returned to dozens of GTA neighborhoods ahead of the spring selling season, with multiple areas across the region entering seller's territory last month, according to real estate agency Wahi's latest market report. The report also notes that last time the GTA was in this kind of market was in November of 2023 with 16 areas consistently seeing homes sold above their asking price. It says that 76 neighborhoods 25.1% move into overbidding territory in February up from 0% in January. An additional 17 neighborhoods or 5.6% selling at asking and 210 neighborhoods 69.3% were in underbidding territory. I'm not too familiar with the site Wahi but I do know if you open up the Toronto real estate board's market watch and that video that's titled deals on my channel talks about going to find the market watch to see exactly what the data looks like you'll be able to see what the sale to list price ratio is and when you see the percentage if it's at a hundred percent that means that properties are selling for what they're listed at if it's above a hundred percent for example 101 percent that means that properties are selling for one percent above their asking price and if it's at 99 percent that means that properties are selling one percent below their asking price. So go find that Toronto Market Watch report because that's where this data will be coming from to get a really good idea of what you're looking at anytime you see these kind of articles. The other element that's important to mention is that this is GTA wide, so the Greater Toronto Area. So we have everything from Halton, Durham, Toronto, York, and Peel. Let's take a look at the actual GTA market stats for February 2024 as we're now halfway through March. Average sale price from a year ago up 1.1% to just over 1.1 million. 1.1 million seems to be that number where prices keep hovering in and around even with all the interest rate volatility 1.1 whether it's a little bit below or a little bit above that's where we've kind of been settling in over the last year or so active listings up 15 percent but number of sales up 18 percent from february of last year this is the big one here and if you've watched any of my previous videos as of late months of inventory is our leading indicator when it comes to activity in the toronto real estate market just under two months of inventory across the board and as you've heard me say many times the number two is the one to look out for so now that this has come into 1.98 it will make things more competitive and it has been making things more competitive for my buyers looking in the toronto real estate market as of late condo average price is down about 1.4 percent from a year ago and condo sales up nine percent which is a big positive when it comes to condos if we look at toronto proper prices basically flat at 0.1 percent just below that 1.1 mark active listings up 22 percent and total number of sales up 13 percent Months of inventory 2.55 and this number is being held up mostly from condos. They've trended down from where things were in October in a buyer's market into a balanced market. But in the freehold side for the detached, semi-detached rows and townhouses, those are all below two right now. So this number is a bit skewed based on the condo inventory right now. Now looking at the monthly sales data, this is my favorite chart to go through. And this is where we see the average price. So again, as mentioned that 1.1 mark, we shot up as high as almost 1.2 last year in May and then dropped to about a million 80 here in November and then even as low as 1 million 26 in January but that was quickly made up in February so that January price point at million 26 a big jump now over 1.1 active listings as mentioned 11,000 which is above January and sales at 5600 which is the highest number of sales we've seen since June of last year which is super notable because June of last year was when they increased the interest rates 0.25 and then they also increased again in July, which put a big halt on the market, as you're seeing in the number of sales, especially through the fall market. And months of inventory up in and around four. So if you were looking for a deal on a property in the Greater Toronto area, the fall market really presented a good opportunity, especially as we're looking back in seeing where inventory stands right now at less than two months of inventory. How does that correlate with interest rates? Well, rates have been held since July of last year, and we saw prices increase significantly from January through 
through May and June of last year, but then started to drop as the rates went up again. Now that rates have been relatively flat and we've also seen the fixed rates come down since October, prices have made a jump from January to February. And once we see those March numbers, it will be interesting to see how things have played out relative on the fixed rate side, even though the variable has remained flat since. In my last video, we went over the key takeaways for February of 2024. So go check out that video for this breakdown and why it's really important to know what's been happening in the Toronto real estate market in this quick snapshot. If you found any value in this slide, drop a comment down below because I can keep making these every single month. Those are the stats for February 2024. And now we're halfway through March of 2024. And there's two notable things this month that are important to watch as we move forward into the spring market. The first one is we are currently just finishing up at the date of this video, March breaks. If there are any families that have been looking to get into the Toronto real estate market, those plans may have been put on hold this week as their kids are off of school and maybe shopping for properties is taking a back seat to that week. The next thing is Easter is early this year. So at the end of this month will be Easter. And I'm anticipating not seeing a ton of new listings come up between this week and two weeks from now, which is Easter. With the official start of the spring market this year, I believe will be on April the 2nd. So right after Easter, I think that will be the official start of the spring market. And we have been seeing a bit of spring weather this month, which may be playing a big factor into the activity in the market. People generally like shopping for properties when it's not covered in snow and freezing and shoveling your car trying to get into a showing. That being said, there's not a ton of inventory out there as we're seeing in the months of inventories because that's our indicator of what the activity is looking like. Last thing to note is that these numbers always come out at the end of the month. So if you're looking for properties at the start of the month, these numbers are still relevant because they always clock in the last day of the month. But if you're looking for properties in the middle towards the end of the month, these numbers are usually delayed and a lagging indicator of what's actually happening on the ground level. So if you want any insight of what I've been seeing with my sellers on the ground level in today's real estate market, book a call with me down below anytime or drop a comment and I'd be happy to answer. I'm Mike Luzes. Thanks for watching.